Okay, so the uh, small country is going to be endowed with uh, the YH1 of the home good in period 1, YH2 in period 2, takes the world prices as given. So uh, it's going to have a budget constraint that looks like this. So let's think about how to solve this problem. Okay, so we're going to set up a Lagrangian actually. Um, and Lagrangian is going to be um, in two periods. So uh, one way to do it is to just have two Lagrangian multipliers, and that's what we're going to do. So we can write out the uh, the utility functions. You know, I'm just going to do the shorthand here, but we have C1 plus C2. You guys remember the definition of these guys is up here. Okay. So uh, you know, I'm putting a one here because there's going to be a time period for each. But this is so we're going to have C1. That's just the utility function plus C2 minus lambda one times this guy minus lambda two times that guy, where we replace these with minus signs. All right, that's gonna be the Lagrangian function. We can take the derivative with respect to say, D, let's just do one for fun, H1. So consumption of the home good at time one. All right, so that's going to be the derivative of C1 with respect to CH1. And notice CH1 doesn't appear in C2, so we can ignore it. Minus, there's no CH1s down here, so we can only look at lambda 1. Lambda 1 times PH1. All right, so the derivative of C1 with respect to H1 is going to be sigma divided by sigma minus 1 times what's inside of here usually. <laughs> well, maybe I should write it out since I don't have it on the slide. C1, uh, CH1, power sig, uh, so I'm used to using sigma. Theta minus 1 over theta plus CF1 to the power sig, uh, theta minus 1 over theta. And then here we're subtracting off 1, so it's going to be. Uh, 1 over theta minus 1 okay um, times CH1 to the power negative 1 over theta set it equal to 0 so then we have this equal to lambda 1 PH1 all right, so I want you to notice something here. <clears throat> what we have here, oh, I, sorry, I, I missed something. Sigma minus one over sigma. This one cancels with that one. Okay, so what we have on the interior of this, uh, of these parentheses here is just C1, but instead of theta over theta minus one, we have one over theta minus one. So it's actually C1 to the power one divided by theta. Okay, and we've got CH1 the negative one over theta is equal to lambda one pH one. All right, and that actually takes us now to the next slide where we have the same, this is exactly what I wrote on the last slide. You can do the same for foreign, okay. So now let's combine these two equalities, okay. So we're gonna add the left-hand side and the right-hand side together, okay. So uh, we're gonna do that and then we're gonna take it to the power one minus theta. So uh, let's do that. We're going to have CH1 to the negative 1 divided by theta. I mean, I can write it up, but it's just going to be exactly what's on this, on this line. So I'm just going to say that's what, that's what we get for this line. So we're adding these two, we're, we're adding these two equations together. So adding the, the left-hand side and then adding the right-hand side. Okay, and then taking both sides to the power, one minus theta, you're gonna get this expression here. I can write it out, but it's just one step, so it doesn't actually give you any additional understanding. Okay, so uh, now let's take both sides to the power theta over <laughs> ne negative theta. I'm gonna raise both sides here, this one I'll write out. Raise both sides to the power uh, theta minus one over theta. Ah, no. Raise both sides to the power of theta over theta minus one. 
Okay, here theta divided by theta minus one. Okay, and um, you're gonna get the next line. You can see that what's left over here is simply negative one. Here we're just raising the whole thing to theta divided by theta minus one. And then on this side, we're gonna get this lambda one to the power uh, negative theta, and then over here, the theta divided by theta is minus one remains. Okay, so that's fine. Um, but what you'll notice is that this part in the parentheses here is actually just equal to C1, not in the parentheses, but this part here, that is actually C1. So here we have C1 times C1 to the power negative one. That's just one. So here what we can do is we can multiply both sides by lambda one to the power theta. So we're gonna get, here's an intermediate step, lambda one to the power theta. And then here we're gonna have uh, is equal to pH1, one minus theta, plus PF1, one minus theta to the power theta divided by theta minus one. Okay, and then we're gonna actually just uh, take both sides to the power one divided by theta, and we end up with this term here, where we've defined P1 as this. So it's gonna be P1, but then to the power negative one uh, with this definition of P1. Okay, why would you use that definition of P1? Well, because of what's on this next slide, P1 is gonna make our lives very easy in terms of algebra. Okay, so here's optimal consumption. Uh, let T be one, say. CH1 is just gonna be PH1 divided by P1 to the power negative theta times C T C1. And you can verify that by looking up here. Don't wanna flip around too much, but look at this. We're getting it from this equation here. Okay, so um, we've solved for theta one. Theta one is gonna be equal to P1 to the negative one, right? So. Um, Using this result down here, we can write CH1 divided by C1 to the power of negative one divided by theta is equal to PH1 divided by P1. Okay, now raise both sides to the uh, power negative theta and we'll get CH1 divided by C1 is equal to P1 divided by PH1 to the power of theta. I'm just trying to remember what exactly the equation I have over here is. Okay, I left the negative there. So uh, let's do it this way. like this. PH1 divided by P1 to the power negative theta. Okay, and then you can just split it, right? So then you can write CH1 is equal to PH1 divided by P1 to the negative theta times C1. And that's actually what exactly we have here on this slide. CH1 is equal to PH1 divided by P1 to the negative theta times C1. Okay, so that's where these equations come from. Next, let's rewrite the budget constraint. Okay, so this is the budget constraint. Um, it says the consumption today has to equal the, um, well, consumption today optimally is equal to this expression, right? We're gonna replace CH1 with this stuff. So we're gonna get PH1 to the power one minus theta and then P1 to the power theta times C1. Plus we're just replacing the CF1 now with this expression, same thing here. Okay, factor out the common P1 and C1, end up with this expression, okay? Um, note that we have here the price index to the power one divided by one, mi uh, excuse me, to the power one minus theta. Okay, so this here, uh, it's kind of skipping a step. Um, so here we have, this is now, I'm just rewriting this equation here in terms of the price index. We have P1 to the power one minus theta 
times P1 to the power theta times C1 using the definition of P1 from the last slide. Note that these guys are going to cancel, so we're going to end up with P1, C1. Okay, And then, so the left-hand side of the budget constraint is P1, C1. The right-hand side is, as before, the endowment times the price plus any sort of borrowing. Okay, We could do exactly the same thing in period two. There's nothing special about period one. Um, so we get P2 times C2 is equal to PH2, YH2 minus the amount you borrowed times the, uh, the interest rate. Okay. Finally, let's combine those two budget constraints. Okay, so um, we're basically eliminating D on the last slide. I just wonder if it's worth doing that, but um, So what you do is you solve for D and then you plug it in here. So you solve for D in this equation and then you plug it in here and you end up with what we have here. Ah, what the heck, let's just do it. Okay, so if we solve for D, we're gonna get, let's see here, D is equal to P1C1 minus PH1YH1. All right. Now let's plug that in here. So we're going to get P2C2 is equal to, I'm changing this to equal to, PH2, assuming everybody uses up their entire budget constraint, minus 1 plus R star times P1C1 minus PH1, YH1. Okay. Now we're going to divide both sides by 1 plus R star, and then put P1C1 on the other side. Okay, so we're going to get P1C1 plus P2C2 divided by 1 plus R star is equal to PH1, YH1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus R star times PH2, YH2. All right, and that is the equation that we have on this slide. So, so far so good. Now, we're gonna, so this is kind of the standard thing that we actually have seen several times in this course. Um, it just took a couple of extra steps to, de to define it because there's two goods within the C's and, and two prices within the P's. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna define something we're gonna call the real interest rate, okay? So that's gonna be the nominal rate divided by inflation. Okay, so here's the nominal rate. That's what people actually Oh, excuse me. This is the nominal rate. 1 plus R star is the nominal rate. That's what people can get by investing abroad. But then prices at home are not constant. Prices at home change based on behavior. So we want to divide by inflation, where inflation is P2 divided by P1. Right? That's inflation. So we're dividing 1 plus R star by inflation to get the real interest rate. Okay. Incorporating that into the Euler equation, okay, we have a 1 plus R here. Uh, 1 plus R star here, we can just um, replace that with 1 plus R times P2 divided by P1. Okay. Um, and if you do that, you're going to see that so this is equal to 1 plus R star. So if you just plug that in here, you're going to see that that P2 cancels. There's going to be P1 remaining. You can divide both sides by P1. And then here, you're also replacing it. So just trust me, it's going to work out this way. I just feel like it's just that one small algebra step to get here. So it's going to give you something very simple at the end of the day. So it says that your consumption when you discount it by the real interest rate, so consumption today and discounted consumption tomorrow, has to equal to uh, the value of your endowment, okay, and then the value of your endowment tomorrow uh, adjusted by the, the real interest rate, okay? So this is kind of the important equation, and I want you to kind of think about it right at the second. So if you have, if you're exporting a lot today, that means that 
the prices you're going to face are going to be low today. Is that right? Let's see here. Yeah, that's right, because the price abroad is fixed. Okay, so the price at home has to be the price abroad times one plus tau, the trade cost. So um, it means that you're sort of discounting the price today, right? So, um, so if uh, trade costs are 25%, then the price today is 25% less than the foreign price. That's who you're exporting. Then suppose tomorrow you're importing, now your price has to be higher, okay? So uh, that's how this is gonna work. That's how it's gonna work. Okay, let's think about borrowing. So what is borrowing? It means that the, that home wants to consume less today, oh, excuse me, consume more today and less tomorrow, which means it's gonna import more today and then export tomorrow. Okay, so that means that today, prices at home are going to be relatively high because it's the foreign price augmented by the, um, the trade cost. Okay, so uh, let's just read this paragraph here. Suppose that home imports, uh, and then ex in period one and exports in period two, the price of the home good is pH star one minus tau in period one, right? It's the price that's fixed abroad, and then it has to be augmented, right? You have to pay even more than the price abroad because some of the goods fall off the boat on the way over to your country. So, um, you know, you pay the price abroad augmented by the fact that some of the goods fell off the boat. So it's even more expensive for you to buy the goods today. Um, and then tomorrow, your price of your home goods could be lower, okay? Why is that? Because the price abroad is fixed, and when you want to sell there, it means that, you know, some of the good is gonna fall off the boat on the way there. So the price at home has to be lower to equalize the, um, the price that a firm could get by selling abroad with the price you get at home. Okay, so if price is high today and low tomorrow, it means that, excuse me, price is high today and low tomorrow, it means there's de deflation, which means that the real interest rate will be, let's see here, P1 divided by P2. If there's deflation, P2 is lower than P1. So, um, <clears throat> So yeah, exactly. So one plus R star is going to be greater than one plus R. Okay. So you, you can plug it in, plug in the trade costs and see this, but it's also just, you can just think about it the, the way that I've just described it. So it means that the, uh, the real interest rate is going to be higher than the nominal interest rate. Okay. So putting it all together, when you want to borrow, the real interest rate is higher than the nominal interest rate. Okay. So you're facing a high interest rate when you want to borrow. Now let's see about lending. Okay, so suppose you want to lend. That means that today you want to consume less and tomorrow you want to consume more. So that means you're going to be exporting more today and then tomorrow you're going to be importing. All right, so suppose that that's the case. Today you're exporting, tomorrow you're importing. Well, when you're exporting, again, the price is low because the price abroad is fixed and you have to make sort of, you have to make people who are selling indifferent between selling at home and selling abroad. So since, when you sell abroad, uh, you know the prices. You have to deal with the trade cost. So for every unit you send, only three fourths of a unit arrives, and then it's multiplied by a high price. Um, your price is going to be lower. Okay, and then tomorrow when you're importing, uh, people abroad have to be indifferent between selling abroad and selling at home in your country, since pH star is fixed and you're gonna to have to pay for the fact that some of the goods fell off the boat. So you're gonna be facing a high price to make those sellers abroad indifferent between selling to you or just selling abroad. Okay, so using the same logic, there's gonna be inflation. Okay, if there's inflation, it means P1 divided by P2 is less than one, which means that the, uh, the real rate will be lower than the nominal rate. So when you're lending, you're facing a real rate that's lower than the nominal rate. So the, the interest rate is low when you're lending and it's high when you're borrowing. All right, so um, just to kind of finish the, uh, the last possible case, suppose you take a small position 
So suppose you're exporting uh, or importing the uh, the endowment code and also doing the same, whatever you're doing, the same thing in period two, then the price is going to be the same in the two periods. Okay, so for very small positions, actually, this effect isn't going to be there. The nominal rate is going to be the same as the uh, as the real rate. And then you can put it into a little graph, I remember, is the next one. So uh, this graph shows you the uh, the real interest rate. Um, well, this is the world's real, uh, the world's uh, nominal interest rate. We call it the world real interest rate, or from our perspective, the nominal rate. That's what we've been calling it. So we've been calling it the nominal rate. We've been calling it R star. For okay, so here's your endowment Y one. Okay, for small positions, there's no difference in the interest rate you face and the uh, the the real interest rate and the nominal rate. They're the same for small positions in either direction. But suppose that you are consuming much more than you than you're endowed with. Well, that means that you are a borrower, and when you're a borrower, you're facing a high interest rate. Suppose that you're consuming much less than your endowment. That means you're a lender. When you're a lender, you're facing a low interest rate. So that's not very nice. Okay, it kind of goes the wrong direction. Okay, so then I guess I can just explain here the intuition. So this might explain why people want to invest at home because when or invest a lot at home. It's because when they want to invest abroad, then they're facing a, a an interest rate that's not very attractive, a real interest rate. When they want to uh, borrow, you know, if they borrow at home, they get whatever the domestic borrowing rate is. But if they borrow abroad, they're facing a very high borrowing rate. So uh, this is kind of how the trade costs can actually cause um, price differences that are going to make it so that real interest rates are unfavorable when you're um, when you're investing abroad. It's actually a very clever argument. Um, so for the exercise that's going to be on your next problem set, I'm just going to give you a couple of numbers and uh, ask you to plug them into the equations from uh, from this model. So that's it for the uh, the two first puzzles. Um, next time we're going to finish the rest of them. Uh, there's four more puzzles, but three of them are three of the four don't really require any model at all. It's just kind of intuition and hand waving. So uh, so we should be able to get through them all. Okay.